This is the Grantastic Podcast. All right, welcome to Grantastic, Jamie Drake. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing okay. Surviving this storm in NorCal. Um, yeah, it's been crazy weather lately. Where Where are you located? Uh, San Francisco. Okay. So, like, I know we're supposed to do the podcast uh, on, or yesterday, I think it was, um, or two days ago, but uh, went to Tahoe, got stuck, got stuck in Tahoe with a sore, uh, snowstorm and everything. I was like, oh, thought I could get out. Nope, that was not the case. Had to shovel our way out, and then uh, we made it down here, but now we're just this giant storms hitting SF right now, so we're just wow. trying to survive. Oh, wow, well, yeah. That reminds me, uh, I went to Tahoe a few years ago with my mom nice. during the winter time too, so it was the first time I'd ever been there, and it was, we had a really, <laughs> we had a really funny situation where we lost uh, the key to my mom's car oh. or either the car or the place we were staying and we had to like circle around a few times and then it ended up being right by her car i think it had fallen out of my mitten or something oh like that. man those, i've yeah. been there before but those were the worst you have a stress. Yeah. it's cold will i get out of here yeah it's a whole thing yeah are you guys used to having um lots of snow in san francisco no not at all. Okay. It's like, that's like a blue moon kind of situation. Every few, maybe hundred years, you see snow hitting the city just because we're so low um, altitude wise, you know, sea level. So it's like, you never see that. Um, but right now it's just so much rain, which we need, of course, in California, just because of the drought and everything. Yeah, I know it well, you know, having lived in uh, Los Angeles for 22 years. Yeah, you already <laughs> so. know that. You already <laughs> You know, yeah. You know, so I mean, it's good to see that we're like getting rain, but just not so much of this rain, just because I don't think the city was ready. I don't think anyone in Northern California was ready, and like, there's just been kind of like floods, and like, there's been some videos of people just getting their paddle boards out and just paddle boarding in right down in Union and SF, and it's just the weirdest thing I've been seeing, and I'm just like, good wow. for them, but like, what the heck? That is crazy. Hmm interesting yeah but you know it's it's it is what it is but uh how i mean right now currently you're in nashville right now I mean. yeah i'm in nashville um i'm actually house sitting for some friends and um i came here after the the holidays and before that i was touring for about four months and so um i came here with the intentions of possibly moving here like checking it out and seeing if I wanted to relocate here because uh, I've basically been nomadic for the last three years. <laughs> Sounds pretty insane, but um, <laughs> so, somehow right before the pandemic happened, um, my life kind of, I don't know, it was almost like I'd been take, I had been, I was taken out of the city and um, moved to, to Ojai for the first nine months of the pandemic. And it was, I was so grateful for that because um, I was already instinctively wanting to get out of my apartment in Silver Lake. And um, I definitely feel like I was being taken care of by some, some someone, someone higher yeah. in the universe. They were like, you're gonna not do well stuck in an apartment without a yard and nature and stuff. So, um, that's a whole, that's a whole conversation, I suppose. Oh, we're here. It's the Grantastic podcast. It's spiritual too. So that's great to hear. And I think something about nature, like there's something about getting away from the city. It's so, it just like, it heals the mind, you know, it heals the mind, the body, and just lets you like reset just because city living with the whole hustling culture and everything, it, it can kind of like break you down. It can break you down and um, kind of just, destroy your soul <laughs> yeah. no, no, you know? it, it really can and that's like it's funny that you said nashville because i've been thinking about that like moving out to nashville and everything just because 
San Francisco isn't really known for, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, but there's music, but it's not like the big, like LA, Nashville, New York, or Atlanta. Um, it's definitely a little bit uh, unique of its own culture, but um, something, yeah. something about like Nashville, I've never been there, but something like the music there, it's always just, it makes you like, I guess, enthusiastic just to get out there and like work and collab and everything. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, I got here um, with those intentions and it's kind of, I've, I've realized in the last couple of weeks um, since, since landing here that uh, I think that Nashville, at least at this point in my life, because I almost moved here like 13 years ago as well, mm -hmm. um, because <clears throat> it's, for me, it's always felt like it, it makes sense for me on paper. Mm -hmm. And so I knew I didn't want to be in LA. I, I've known that for at least the last five years. Um, but it's so hard to make a big move like that. And I moved to LA when I was 21. So I've spent my whole adult life there and I built, built my career there and everything. And so there's a lot of <laughs> uh, anxiety going into like a big move like that. Um, but once I got here, I kind of realized like, I think Nashville is this place for me where in my, it's like in my mind, it makes sense on paper that I should be here. But um, there have been other things that have been going on in my life the last <clears throat> year, especially where it's, um, I, I, it kind of just confirmed me for me that um, where I need to go is back to France, which is where my boyfriend is. And sure. the last place that I um, felt at home was in his, his chalet. And, um, and that's, I don't know if I'll just be there. I don't know what's gonna happen. I've been nomadic for the last few years. And so I don't know if that means I'm gonna go there and live in France and then come to the US to tour and go back to France and live and then figure out touring in Europe. Definitely. That's actually my goal, but uh, or it might, it might be, you know, I come back, I find, I find a place here somewhere in the U S that feels like home to me, um, and have a place here. But right now it just, it kind of doesn't make sense. You know, like, mm -hmm. it's like, it's a good, think, you know, you'll know where it feels right and everything where you connect, I think with the community, you know, and like get to know everyone and just like it's just a gut feeling that's the only way i can describe it yeah and i have to say you know i put out my new record new girl in, in june and then since then have been touring that album and, and also finally getting to tour my last record because that was released right before the pandemic so i didn't get to tour that one either so i feel really happy that i i was on the road and got to have that experience but i drove all over the us i mean i drove from la to new york I, I did like one, two, three, four. I did like four drives. I've literally driven everywhere in the U.S. just about, except for the South and stuff mm -hmm. in Texas. But um, there's nowhere in the U.S. that I feel that that yeah. feeling, you know. And I just I thought I was gonna feel it here, but that was just me being mental. Well, you know? what is it like? I guess um, just comparing the two cities nashville and los angeles in the music community what have you noticed like pros and cons well see i haven't really been in nashville long enough to experience the music community i do have a lot of friends here that are musicians and so i can only um go off of what they say and they they, they say that it it's a lot there's a lot more community it's more it's more of a community here where people really um support each other um and there's still like the competitive underlying competitive thing i'm sure of course but i don't know if it just has to do with like people being being in a city where it's 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 still a big city but it's not like los angeles where there's this in la there's this underlying um at least with the experience that that I had in the last like 14 years is just um 
there's just a lot of a lot of competitiveness, a lot of um, I guess a lot of people are just very self-centered. Yeah, because I... everyone goes there to become famous or successful in some way, and even if half the people you run into in the community are from a different state because most people aren't from there. You know, I do actually know a lot of people from LA and those are the most grounded people actually that are natives. Um, I would say a lot of the transplants are the ones that come. And for some reason, there's like this, almost like the spirit that takes over. And um, it doesn't help that everything is so far away and you have to drive everywhere. It's not walkable. Um, like I lived in Silver Lake and one of my closer friends lived in Santa Monica and I hardly ever saw her because it's like, oh, you live 35 minutes away. That's a long way. <laughs> yeah, with the traffic everything because like my mom's from like Long Beach and everything. So visiting down there and seeing the cousins and then meeting some friends and fr of, of friends, it's like, just like you got to plan ahead your whole day. just sitting in traffic and everything and just, yeah, I just... LA not not hating you know it has its thing and everything but just I love like at least NorCal San Francisco everything's close you know you can walk to it maybe 30 40 minute walk you know from like the Marina District to like um, Chinatown or something it's not that far of a walk and um, and like the biggest thing you're saying like um, everyone like wants to help each other I feel like in LA it's just like you're focusing on you and I went to a few parties and people were like just straight up like check my music out or check my like acting and I was like I don't even know your name yet and you just kind of threw yeah. it. I was just you know I'm here to like like let it happen naturally the the community the friendship and let it flourish on its own versus just showing me your projects right and a lot of what I experienced in Los Angeles was <clears throat> If I had, if I was more successful, if I had something happening, all of the little acquaintances that I had maybe met in the past who were, we had a great connection, but they were just too busy doing their own thing because it's like, it's, it's like once you have like a, a little bit of a spark happening in your, in your career or something, or you post something on Instagram where you're like, I did this commercial or blah, blah, blah. It's like everyone's like, it's almost like they gravitate towards you again and you get all these text messages or like, oh my God, I need to hang out. I'm like, it's just like, oh my God, fuck you. Yeah, no, oh, whoops. No, no, this is, this is okay. You can swear here. This is a, <laughs> we, we, what it all out to say. But yeah, it's just, I think it's like, just like fake friends or whatever. It's just like. Yeah, there's a lot, there is a lot of fake energy there and it's not everyone. I mean, I will say it took me about 10 years. To, to finally meet some real friends that actually cared about me. And by that point, I was already ready to leave. And, and I had sort of um, developed this hard, sh hard, hard shell, sort of like, that can't be real. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they can't really be interested in me as a person. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I do take responsibility for my part of it too, because I think that when I started my career, I was 29. I wasn't like, I wasn't like a, a kid starting out. And so I had this sense of, I had just gotten divorced and I had this sense of, I have this new life that I wanted to create as soon as possible. And so I was like, so focused on myself. Right. So um, there was this sense of, I need to do this as quickly as possible because I just lost like 20 in my whole twenties, you yeah. know? And so, um, I'm sure a lot of the people that I attracted were similar to myself. Cause that's kind of what ends up happening. Right. But I can't take all the blame there because I really did try to make, um, authentic friendships in those earlier days. And I remember at one point realizing like, oh, I thought this person was my friend because we both play music and we're, it's exciting and all of this stuff. And then you just kind of realize at some point like, oh, we're just business friends. Okay, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I remember feeling like kind of heartbroken over that at first.
And then it's kind of sad, you know, you sort of just get used to that after a while. Um, but, it, but then over time, it just creates a quality of life that is lonely and unsustainable, you know? Um, so I love LA because because that's just where I happened to be when um, I started my career and um, I'm grateful for that chapter of my life, but it's definitely over. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. everything you're saying, like I vibe and for the people who will listen for sure, be just because there's a song I was listening to actually weirdly enough, it just came up on the Spotify algorithm. Uh, Mark Benno, I think his name is. Uh, anyways, he's like from the sixties from Austin. He has a song about the like the lyrics about like when you look into someone's eyes you know they're your true friend like you just you just it just clicks versus the people who you look into their eyes you don't see the soul or the love it's something that's like i'm butchering the, the lyrics but something like spiritual and i was just resonating to that and hearing this i was just like yeah you just know where it's like you see it and it's like this person and i are just gonna be close we're just gonna understand each other and we have each other versus there's some people i see like meet people at functions or whatever and you're just like we have nothing here but that's okay we, we you live and learn so right and you know a thing that's the thing that really bothered me there is that i kept thinking that if i was just genuine that the people that i had those genuine moments with mm -hmm. would be intuitive enough to pick up on that and also want to connect whether whether one of us was more ahead in their career or not, whether one of us, you know, whether they were famous or not famous or whether I was like famous in their eyes or whatever. But it really, I have to say most of the people just disappoint. <laughs> yeah, no, I uh, definitely, I think it's uh, when fame comes into it, people like forget, like we're all human at the end of the day. We're all, we're all living uh, things or I don't know what, you, I guess we're just, I don't want to say creatures. I don't know what the right word I'm looking for here, but just we're living and we shouldn't like, you know, if one person maybe did something amazing, but that you shouldn't let that ego take over you, you know, um, it's just like, mm -hmm. just like ego is the biggest, I think, thing that holds us back from being our true selves and just, I don't know, listening to like, definitely. And I think, you know, ego, I feel like this is what I feel about it. Um, is that, the ego, <clears throat> the ego comes up because people still have a lot of, they still have a lot to resolve in their past. Yeah. And if you don't resolve, if you don't resolve your past, if you don't accept everything bad and everything good that's happened to you and you don't resolve it, then you're, you're going, your ego is going to constantly be like a driver in your life. And I think it's really hard to, um, unless you can be self-aware enough about, um, oh, that was my ego talking or whatever. Um, you're going to be like living unconsciously. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? For real. And it's, it's hard. Like I was having this discussion with like a, a close friend a while back about just like, how do you tell someone who you care that they have this ego issue? And you try, you want to tell them like, but not to hurt their feelings. You know, you're just like, listen, you need to like chill about how you, you know, you meet all these people and you just kind of just talk about yourself instead of talking about what's about their lives. You know, like, how do you tell someone who you love that you have an ego issue or you're being a narcissist? It's like, I don't know. I mean, you, you care, but you don't want to come off so like a dick or anything. And it's like, uh, it's like a balance. And I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, I guess it just depends on, I think, uh, I think in America, it's, it's really hard to tell people the truth Yeah. because um, in Europe, it's not a problem. Yeah. You know, my boyfriend is the most direct person I've ever met, met in my entire life. And, you know, he's French. So um, a lot of our communication problems in the beginning had to do with because like I'd be getting my feelings hurt or I'd be offended or my ego would be offended because he would just he knows how to poke exactly where he needs to poke and that's that's what a lot of French people do is they they poke you exactly where they can see we were okay we're back sorry about that folks um I think we were talking about like 
we were on the spiritual journey, which I just want to say love so much. Love having these conversations with like like minded folks just because we need more of it. Um, yeah, I, I think we I think we were talking about France. That's where we kind of were left off about like how they just give it to you straight, which I think we need sometimes in our lives, just because I think sometimes Americans like like you said, I which I love the visual thing, just like they cover their eyes and they just don't want to hear with hear about it or deal with it. It's like they can't like I'm not saying every Americans like this, but like criticism, I think it's like constructive criticism. I think it's so important to have because it helps you grow. We need it. Yeah, definitely. Um, I wonder if America, I wonder if America is uh, different than Europe in this respect, because we were founded with this like Puritan culture. Yeah. And I think maybe it's something that seeped into our culture, just mm -hmm. like things that we, that should not be talked about or, yeah, you know, definitely. I think because people ahead. there talk very openly about sex and like, you know, what the relationships are like and no. things that they do. And you know what I mean? No, it's a, it's a real thing because like, I don't know, like, uh, my mom's a hippie. And my dad is not so much of a hippie. I mean, he, he, he like listens to music and stuff, but my mom is like full on, like, you know, just tells me everything, what it is. Like, you know, was the first one who showed me how you really roll a joint. This is how you really smell like the whole deal, which I like love her to death still today. Um, yeah. And then I talked to some other people's folks and everything and I'm, and they're just looking at me like, what the fuck? Like we don't, you don't talk. And I was like, it's like, well, there's nothing weird about it. We're just human, you know? Yeah, it's, it is weird. <clears throat> and then you just get this idea because of the programming that you've been raised in that this is the right way to be or this is yeah. this is right or wrong, you know? Definitely. It's, it's interesting, especially um, definitely folks who have raised, like, I don't know, back east, at least some of my cousins and everything, like, they're very, like, you know, believe in the nine to five job, get the pension, the, you know, formal, like, like wear a student tie, go to church. Like, and I'm like, you know, I was more raised like, yeah, Catholic, but I'm more like, I wouldn't say Catholic anymore, more, more spiritual. Like I go to like, to the Hare Krishna temple and stuff. And like, I, like, I believe in just like karma and like you live your life now and everything. And then you go back into your consciousness at the end and everything. And it's when I have these conversations with them, they just look at me like, I've been brainwashed and then they give me a weird look like I don't know I need like like the electric chair or whatever like you know to fix your brain or whatever and I'm like bro you guys need to chill this is this is just who I am you got to appreciate every walk of life for what they give you and you take it if you like it great if you don't that's fine let them do their own thing yeah I was I mean like I was raised in uh like the evangelical Christian culture, you know, um, and I, I don't know. It's interesting. There's so many programs that yeah. we're a part of. Yeah. They're all at the end of the day that it seems like they're just programs of control, you know, so yeah. we'll, we'll remain as, as unconscious as possible because whoever started the, these programs, you know, I think we're actually afraid of how powerful humanity really is if you actually go inside of yourself and yeah. resolve things, you know? Definitely. Um, but I think people are, um, I mean, we're taught certain things as children about what life is and what, who we are and what's right and wrong and everything. So when you're a child, you're like a little sponge and you just believe whatever you're told, mm. you know? so that's the biggest thing and then like um you believe in whatever your folks say instead of going out in the world and learn for yourself you know i think it's easy to just like agree with your folks have to say or like their beliefs and whatever and it's it's not which you know do what you will with that but i think it's good for you to go out into the world and experience life for yourself and you make up your own decision you have a brain you have a conscious use it you know don't let don't let people just spoon a spoon feed you like information. I think that's all about how life is. You got to grow and learn. Yeah, definitely. And I think that, um, oh gosh, I think I just lost my thought. Something about how, 
I think it, I find it so interesting when people are, when they have their beliefs challenged mm -hmm. that they get so offended. Yeah. You know, it's like, even if you want to have a, an intellectual conversation about it, not necessarily a debate, just you're curious, like, yeah. okay, tell me more about, about that. They get defensive because it's something that's become so part of their identity that they can't not be that. Definitely. Because if they let go of it, they're terrified of who they are. They don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. Fact. You just like, like, you just nailed the points, which I just love. You're like, yes, a hundred percent go off queen. Like, yeah, it's, it's true. It's so true. And I think we need to change that. I think people need to like, just don't get so, like you said, offended or just feel like they're being targeted. We just, we're just, like you said, you just want to understand like the greatest gift in life is knowledge. And you're just trying to understand someone's point of view and their knowledge to see if it makes sense or not or line up with your knowledge and you know you don't need to start yelling or cursing or you know be aggressive you just just talk it out relax take a deep breath it's gonna be fine yeah but I think you know there is something to, to the fact that I can there's certain people in my life where I can't have those conversations and I don't push it because I already know that they're not ready and that's not to say that I'm better than them. It's just to say that we all have our own journey. Yeah. And at one point in my life, um, like when I finally, when, it took me like 20 years to, um, to pick through my upbringing, you know, like the conditioning that I had being raised in the church, um, because there was so much good attached to it as well. And there was so much um that I felt had shaped it it shaped me as a person so I was like if I don't have this I don't know who I am um and so I do think for for me it's like I think that people hold on to those things be, because it's so attached to their identity and and they're not really ready to to grow and to evolve and to what they're who they can become more of you know mm -hmm. I guess that's maybe what life is all about it's like you know you live this this story here, this chapter in this life here, and then you know you die and you become a, a different version of that somewhere else. I guess I'm not exactly sure how that works, but I do think that I I feel that I've had many 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 lives and different experiences, it's different genders, different yeah. kinds of beings. You know, it's like. It, all of that is possible <laughs> yeah the reincarnation is a real thing you know like it's an interesting um and an appreciative interesting thought of like how you know i don't know if it comes from the buddha or for the hinduism which one it like since maybe they both believe in it but like the idea that you like learn from your past selves and you try to be a better person from each life you know you learn then you die and then you keep learning until you like the idea of hinduism until you hit brahma where you're just like you're good and then you're with the god brahma um so it's, yeah it's, i, I no. don't really know anything about um either of those like religions i, I suppose it's i think for me it's just sort of like an instinctual yeah. knowing that i've kind of come mm -hmm. to over the years but i do i do i have found myself definitely like I don't identify myself as anything because I think that once you identify yourself as something that you're limiting possibilities. And um, so I don't really like, I used to identify as a Christian, but now I'm just like, I'm Jamie. <laughs> yeah, that's how it should be. yeah, definitely. Do you feel that some of your music is spiritual? Like maybe it doesn't have like, like, like Indian music or something like that, but like the words you write, you feel a connection to them deeply. Oh yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, I would say like the last record I put out, everything's fine. That a lot of those songs I wrote while I was going through my deconstruction of my faith and um, like, Oh, well, Oh, well, I wrote that song about the death of my relationship with God at the time, you know, my idea of who God was. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, in wonder, I wrote that song that was kind of like, I was channeling when I, I was channeling this idea. Um, and I didn't even know what it was about until later. 
And and recently I've realized like that's what I that's what I do when I'm writing songs. I'm like channeling my future self because two or three years from the moment I write a song, I'll realize I'll have a moment where I'm listening to it or I'm singing it and I have this epiphany. I'm like, oh my God, I wrote that song three years ago for myself now. And it's like this crazy yeah. kind of experience. And I, I feel like really, I feel really grateful to like be conscious enough to like mm -hmm. be able to identify that because it's a really cool, it's like a, com it's like having a communion with my, with myself in a weird way. It sounds kind of strange to say, but it's like, I'm a part of the universe and yeah. the universe poured this into me and I don't understand it, but the me here on earth in this body gets to experience part of this, like experience of the future in a song. <laughs> but yeah wonder was like i kind of like i thought um and also too like as i change sometimes the songs take on different meanings for me too and i guess it's the beauty of the song is like once i put it out there um it's gonna have a message for everyone wherever they're at mm -hmm. because when you listen to music you i think you're you're soul maybe picks up on things that you're already going through in your life and the songs that you're really connected to you you're like oh this is what this song to me this means because that's where i'm at right now in my life but it's kind of interesting yeah i think i think what everything you're saying is it's not weird i think it's just beautiful in its own shape and form and um it's crazy how you just said like you know you write in three years you just like you, you connect and it's like how did this happen it's like you're like you're like kind of like planting the seeds ahead of time in a way with the universe is granting you yeah it's almost like i'm preparing myself to understand a moment in my life in the future yeah you're learning your life yeah yeah like i wrote it's a wonderful life in 2017 i was at echo i was at echo park lake laying on a picnic blank picnic, picnic blanket um and i got the song in my head and i started writing it um and the first line is uh laying on the grass just staring at the sun and i was in the grass staring at the sun and i had this melody come to me and like so i was just like writing in the present moment um but I wasn't writing specifically about what was going on in my life at the time. I thought I was writing it for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And then um, a few years later, after my record came out, that song is at the end of my record. Um, I was listening to the album after it had been mastered just to like listen to it. And I was listening to it on my kitchen floor. It was a little high. <laughs> And I listened to the whole album and that song, well, while I listened to that song, I just started weeping because while well, that time in my life, me on my kitchen floor, I was like in this place in my life where I, I knew I was done with LA. I was in my apartment for like a month, but other than that, I'd been airbnb it out like for the last three years, basically. So every time I go back there, it's like cute to be there for a little bit, but because it also, because it feels like a little Jeannie Drake museum from her in her thirties when she was like trying so hard to like do music and it's really sweet. But then, you know, I felt like I was kind of stuck in that place and I was like, I don't know where I'm going next. Um, you know, so a lot of the lyrics in that song are about being afraid of of what's coming next because you don't know what it is and um and at the end of it all though the, there's like this hopeful message it's like even though this is how i'm feeling it's still a wonderful life and um and so like that whole it was like it was like i was encouraging myself and then and just having that experience of 
you know, having my mind completely blown by the fact that I'd written that like, three or four years beforehand, I was like, holy fucking shit. <laughs> I think that's when I realized, like, when I'm writing songs, I'm like, it's like my future self is like leading me mm. for a moment in, for yeah. a moment in, in my future when I'm going to like have this moment. And it's just a beautiful moment that I get to have with myself. Like, it's not like I'm on a stage, I'm not on Hollywood Bowls, you know, like, I'm just like, this is for me. And that's like, the fact that I get to be somebody here that experiences that, that's a gift. It's crazy. Definitely. I think, I think that's so, you know, amazing to hear and curious if like, because when he said all that, I think about this interview of like Paul McCartney talks about like how he wrote, you know, let it be and it came through a dream and everything and with through his mom. It's okay. And it's like hearing everything you're saying. I mean, not a dream, but you know, the idea of like planning ahead. It's like our consciousness. That's the moral of the picture here story. It's like yeah. how we deeply connect to it. And it's like planning everything out or trying to talk to us. Like there's another person here. It's just not us in this one body. There's another thing living there and it's trying to guide us when like times of trouble or something and it's it's just fast yeah yeah it's like the i think it's like i like i like to call it my future self or you know like i guess it's like it's my higher self mm. and i um i think in the last like i don't think i know <laughs> in the last few years as i've been really working on clearing out a lot of the past um like old wounds and hurts and like just resolving things within that i've been able to live my life a lot more in the present instead of living in the past because as human beings we spend so much of our thought life in the past mm -hmm. um and, and regrets and things like that or being angry or you know, or hurt over different things. It's like, I think once we resolve those things, we can actually, I came into this experience and I was like, oh my God, I can just live in the present all the time. And then I was like, I wonder how to unlock being able to live in the future. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I do think that that is, that's possible. And I have moments where that's happening. And I think that for me, when I write a song like that, I'm living in the future. Mm. That's something that's happening. Maybe. I don't know. No, yeah. I think I think you made a, a made a great statement there. It's just like, you know, once you like I feel like heal your past and once you like everything I shouldn't say fine, but once you like come to terms with it and resolves, then when you can focus, you know, after you finish one step, you're living in the present, you're living in the moment, you you can appreciate what's around you, your walk of life. And then that's something like you're saying gives you the glimpse of getting to the future and then experience a little taste of it or helps you write about it and then somehow boom you already did this song like i wish i had a song about something it's like wait i do it's right here or it's a release and it's like holy shit what the heck so <laughs> yeah yeah it's cool but would you say like so we're talking about everything's fine but then new girl it, it would be more like the past though because you're talking in a few songs you know talking about you know, bouncing in different locations, you know, school, family, mm -hmm. like what, what was, I guess, the thought process writing those songs, as we were just talking about present. Yeah. Everything. So when I wrote the song, New Girl, um, I had this kind of like fun, melodic, uh, fun melody that felt to me kind of like a bossa nova kind of I was literally yeah. going to say, yeah, I have it in my notes. You sounded like Astrid uh, Guberto for sure. Like when I heard. Oh, something. wow. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe she helped me write it. Yeah. Who knows? Um, yeah. <laughs> anything's possible. Um, but uh, uh, I had this fun melody in my mind in, in, that was coming out. And I was having all of these memories flash through my mind of, um, that memories I remember consciously from my childhood and all of them had to do with me as a kid at different ages in different places and 
feelings that I was having um, in those moments. And, um, and then the chorus, and then part of those, part of that moving was that I always had to go to a new school. Like I went to nine different elementary schools before the fifth grade. Mm. So a lot of my, a lot of that stuff that was needing to be resolved when I was writing the song, writing the song was helping me kind of comb through it and, and resolve it a little bit just by singing about it. Um, a lot of those like old past and fears that my inner child has was from experiencing like having to start school and being the new girl at school all the time and being totally afraid and wanting to hide in the back of the class and afraid to raise my hand and afraid to speak because I was definitely a lot more um, of an introverted child. So I didn't want to have a spotlight on me. Um, and, um, but like, those were the feelings that I had as a kid oftentimes. And, um, but then singing about it in this fun kind of a way and singing um, this chorus that's, I'm always the new girl, God help the new girl. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm always the new girl, the new girl. It's like, um, it's just kind of fun. Yeah. But it's like you're singing about something that was uncomfortable um, in a really lighthearted way. So I felt like, I think musically, there was like a nice contrast. Um, and I think a lot of people can relate to having that experience. Um, I've actually had a lot of people write to me. I had this 70 or one, 71 year old woman write to me um, like on Instagram or something and say that she'd heard that song for the first time. And it brought her back to when she was a kid and she was growing up and she moved around a lot. Um, and that inside, she still feels like that nine year old girl, you know? And so <laughs> being able to relate to other people because of the experiences I've had. It's like, it's such a cool, it's a cool thing to be able to do through music. Um, did I answer your question? No, you did. You, you, I mean, more questions pop from that, like, which is great. Um, yeah, I think a, the song is like, it's one of those types of songs that are just, um, what's the right word. It's, I don't know if it's it's uh you can play it over time you know what i mean it's a classic it's uh it just has a a vibe where oh. you know certain songs where it's like it hits um a century like this is 2000 this is 90s this is a this is a song that you can play you played this back in the 60s or 70s it would fit in perfectly it has <laughs> sound where it's like yeah when i first heard it because again shout out i don't know how i found your music but it just happened we're here now which i'm blessed and thankful for and it was just like oh my god this is going straight to my bossa nova playlist and everything and then i went to go listen to your album and everything and i was like it you do it's just not only bossa nova you do folk you do you know pop you the string sections in some of your songs i'm like oh my god like it you do Aww. it super great and but it's it's timeless that's the word i'm looking for your music is timeless it doesn't matter what era it is it can it can fit in with anywhere which i think is amazing of itself and um yeah thank you so much i mean yeah. that's definitely an intention that i have when i'm writing and um recording my stuff so i'm yeah. glad that it comes across that way Definitely. And I think it's great that, you know, I don't feel like a lot of people, maybe they do. This younger generation doesn't know what I feel like with Bossa Nova is. So it's great just to hear that. Like when I heard those guitar, the style of playing, I was like the two, four. All right, there we go. And it was, it's in the percussions. And I mean, did you, because Bossa Nova is its own form of playing. I mean, I'm assuming, do you know a lot of different styles of guitar playing, would you say? Or did that song take a second or was there another? No, no, I don't. It's like as a songwriter, I can morph into different genres and stuff but um as a guitarist i'm i'm a good folk guitar player but um for those different albums i had different uh producers and guitar players on them like for for this album it was um my dear friend and uh 
uh, Austin Miles Brandt. Um, he played all the guitars, all the bass. He played most of the drums as well, except on for, for on Easy Target. Um, and we play together um, live whenever we're in the same area. So I love playing with him. He's an incredible guitarist and uh, also an amazing solo artist as well. Sweet, love it. That's that's amazing. I gotta have him on then and talk to him about his creativity. Yeah, definitely. Do you say, um, let's say when you don't have other producers, is it easy for you to like just kind of compose your own song, or how how is your structure? Would you say when you like going into like you know writing or like composing a song, is it is it the same? Is it different? Well, are you asking about the writing like when i'm writing the song or when um it's getting like produced and you're adding the different elements that you hear in your mind i guess, I guess the second question okay yeah so for <clears throat> for my last record everything's fine um i made that with aj manette and when we were starting out um See, I actually put out my first solo album in 2009, mm -hmm. but no one can find it because I took it down, <laughs> which yeah. I regret now. It was an, it was an egoic choice, basically, um, before I put out the first single for Everything's Fine, which was in 2018, I took that album down. And it was called When I Was Yours. So for Everything's Fine, um, when AJ and I started working together, we were just playing music together and he, he wanted to, you know, produce, have someone produce our album. And I was like, it's super expensive because the experience I'd had with my first record is that I got divorced and I ended up spending like 17 grand on the record when I could have probably spent a lot, a lot less. Um, I had no idea. I was such a noob and, you know, someone kind of took advantage of me <laughs> um but uh and then his response was like we're gonna do this ourselves and i was like okay and he's like one of the most he's one of, he's he, i rarely say this about anybody but i really do feel like he's kind of like a, like kind of like a genius you know when it comes to like figuring things out he basically taught himself how to um engineer mix and you know, produce everything like by watching YouTube videos. And this is the kind of person who would like, um, like he's a classical guitarist too. So he'll like practice for five hours a day. So, you know, together we, together because we're so different. Like I like, I used to like to say that like, he's like Michelangelo, like chipping away at something like very precisely. You know, and I'm like Jackson Pollock. I'm like, let's take this and throw it at the wall and see what happens. You know what I mean? So I definitely love that. <laughs> our two styles together ended up making, creating a really nice balance because sometimes it's what he wanted to do was way too perfect. And, and, um, and I was like, no, we need to fuck it up a little bit, you know? Um, so everything's fine was the result of many years of him him and i working together and developing our own production style um and, and if you're curious you can hear our first album that we produced together and it's under the name nobel and it's a picture of him and i we made an ep in like 2014 um after developing the sound together and when i say developing a sound together i mean like he's definitely more of a technical guy but he's also very like a musical person like he write wrote all the string parts and played all of the instruments and things but there were definitely pr production type elements that i would come up with where i'd be like i hear like i hear like this melody playing being played with this kind of in like of an instrument you know and so when i was first starting out with him i was very much part of the production of it and what i exactly what I wanted it to sound like. And I was a little bit of a control freak because I wanted it to be the opposite of experience as to what I'd had, you know, in 2009, where I was like this kid coming in with, you know, a bag of money and, you know, this producer and 
he did everything and I didn't like it, you know? So, um, so to balance that out, that's what happened when I was aging. So for new girl, I had a different experience because everything was, um, first of all, everything's fine. Took us four years to make. And part of the reason is because I was a part of like a lot of different projects at that time. But when I made new girl, it was just me and Austin and my producer, Rich Jacks, in a house in the Santa Monica Mountains, recording in this house for two weeks. Cool. And it was a very organic experience. Um, and it was the kind of experience I wanted to have because I wanted the record to sound like it was made in like, you know, the early 70s or something. Yeah. And ever, all of the tracks I are like, I only did like a few takes on every track and because my producer wouldn't let me <laughs> do more than that like well he would let me sing until we got the right take basically but um I wanted to do single takes I didn't want to do a bunch of chop chopping and copy pasting and stuff so so these two albums are like very different like um everything's fine is a lot more cerebral even though it's like lush and gorgeous, like it's it's very much like me and AJ Manette. And then this new girl album is like more of like leaves my heart open. And it's like more 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 organic and you know, totally different processes. Yeah. I well, I like both of them. I just want to point out because like, I think the biggest thing, it's natural. You know what I mean? It's it doesn't feel forced when I listen to your music because there's some music you, I feel like with some artists, they try to just be relevant, you know, and just trying to get the listens or likes or whatever you want to call it nowadays, or just on the playlist versus you're, you're not focusing on that. You're focusing on you and what your heart and mind wants to preach. And, uh, yeah, Thanks. yeah. Well, just speaking from the heart and just what I'm <laughs> observing here, um, which is what we need more of, you know, like, cause the, the music I love is that timeless music. You know, you can talk it from, you know, uh, Tom Joe Beam from Bossa Nova to, um, I don't know, Bruce Springsteen or um, Bill Evans for jazz or um, yeah. the Dead Kennedys or the Brian Jones Massacre or, you know, just uh, all these different peoples or Janis Joplin. I could go on with different fucking people here all day, but I'm just, you yeah, know, when I hear their music, it feels like, they're speaking from the heart or whatever the soul or what's going on in their life in that time. And that's a timeless music. Cause that's like, it could be so relevant to whatever, wherever you are in 2040, 2020, whatever. And your music's the same going back to what I was saying, like you can listen to that song and like take the, you said 71 year old woman still feels like a nine year old. That was the thing. Like there was this interview from George Harrison and Ravi Shankar where it's like, we might be old. And this is when they were old, like in their eighties, but like, our spirits will always be kids. We'll always will be that, you know, 20 year old. And he was like, I think Robbie's a little bit older, like the 30 year old will always will be that inside of us. And it's like, it's so true. It doesn't matter. We're just old outside, but the inside will always be young. Mm -hmm. That's true. Definitely. Yeah. It's, you know, can't lose that either because uh, then you just die inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's why you guys stay pure and just in in the tar with the, like social media and like people trying to follow trends and stuff. It's it's important to be true to yourself. And I think definitely with music, it's it's like a way to escape. It's a way, you know, you don't have to worry about society. I don't know about you. When you create music, you feel like it's a place where you don't feel judged or whatever. You can just be Jamie Drake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting day and age to be making music and, and wanting to stay true to yourself and, and also, you know, like part of you hoping that you can be relevant to like, yeah. you know, like if it, you know, it's my job, like <laughs> my, uh, paying my rent and all that stuff depends on having that relevance or, um, all of that and and for the most part throughout my career my steam has just been from the joy of creating it and the joy of getting to 
just live my life because when I started out I when I started out it was like I felt like I had a second chance at life because the choice I had made in my youth to get married to the wrong person it took up so much of my time and and, and then I was like so happy like I literally felt like I was being dug, dug out of a grave and getting another chance to live and so to actually get to experience that in my life over these last like 14 years or so it's like I'm so grateful for it and um and I'll always I will always be a songwriter and musician but I think right now I'm kind of in this like I, I sort of feel like I'm in this like in like limbo where I'm going through some kind of evolution of myself and I don't really know what that means I'm excited about it um but uh it might mean that I, maybe I take a little break and just like enjoy life. Definitely. Yeah. Well, you mentioned you know? a point about like, it's your job. It's, it's, or I, I like the word career. Cause I feel like jobs, like you're working for the man and I'm not, Yeah, right. I'm not here for that. <laughs> man. Uh, um, but it, yeah, I realize, you know, do you do music cause you love it, but also you have to, bring in people who are interested in what you're doing. It's a balance. Like I realized life in general, I think it was Ram Dass who said, it's like life is a balance. You have to, you can't have too much of one thing or it'd be too saturated and then it'd be too much. You got to like balance it out with pros and cons. And um, I think it's, it's a, you do, it looks easy, but I know it isn't, you know, just as seeing the curtain, like the music you make, um, I enjoy it and you will, I hope enjoy what you do with the songs and everything, but also you got to make sure will someone connect to it as well. You know, I realize it's hard to connect to that. Yeah. I think, you know, having been on tour for most of the second half of the year, um, it's funny because in my, my career, I have, spent a lot of time in the studio and like in that creation process and in the writing process and um I didn't spend as much time touring because I wanted to figure out who I was as an artist first and that took me a really long time <laughs> you know um I was a part of three different bands and and a solo artist and had different recording projects all of it was like me, you know, kind of like being a scientist and like working and in, in, in there, like trying to figure out like, okay, what's, who am I? Because I think that was important for me because uh, as a songwriter, I can write like a lot of different kinds of songs and I didn't want to be pigeonholed necessarily as one specific style. But then, you know, by the time um, I figured out who I was, it was sort of like all these great things were happening and then it was like okay we got a tour and um don't get me wrong i really do like i really like touring um like and this is on like as opposed to love <laughs> um it's i think the logistics as you're getting older are just it's you know i'm not in i'm not a spring chicken anymore i'm not in my 20s or my 30s um i'm you know i spent four months like on the road with my little dog moxie hey come here moxie come here come here come say hi okay i need to get her yeah we're here for it, we're here for it. amazing oh my god adorable so, here's my girl what kind of dog is moxie she is a, a multi poo. Love it. <laughs> Adorable. How old? She's 10. Oh my God. Still cute. Like a puppy. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, so I toured with my dog. That's awesome. In my convent element for four months. And I made that shit work. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and meanwhile, I'm not living in my apartment in Los Angeles. Someone else is renting it. And, and I don't know where I want to live. <laughs> so being a touring musician is actually perfect for me because I'm traveling around anyway, right? 
mm-hmm. staying yeah. with different friends and family, staying in hotels and all that stuff. But it's like super adventurous. And I'm I'm super adventurous. But I, I think I've just reached this kind of point in my life where I'm like, I just wanna I just wanna live comfortably for a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> and the touring thing, um Actually, a lot of people have terrible touring experiences. My experience has been great. Um, even when I've had shows canceled, I was able to pull together like this kick-ass house concert in like in Pittsburgh, you know? Like, and I was able to like meet meet fans who'd been fans for, of me for years. Like I was totally um I was just like surprised you know like i had my show in philadelphia and in new york i had people waiting in line afterwards to talk to me for like 40 minutes and i'm just finding vinyl and stuff i'm like oh this feels great like i finally get to do this you know what i mean um but it is like oof, lots of driving lots of driving lots of um and i've actually slept great too um but there's just a lot of different experiences I've had now where I'm just like looking into my future and thinking if this is the quality of the tours that I'm getting, like if this is the met, like it kind of feels like, okay, universe, I've put out, I've opened my heart completely and I've, I've given everything, all of myself mm-hmm. to this life that I've chosen. I've written these songs and it's, and I've, And I've been true to myself. And at some point, like, I did think that there would be a return for my work. You know what I mean? Not like, not like, oh, poor me. Why am I not like Brandy Carlisle or whatever? You know what I mean? Like, not even that level. I'm just saying, like, could you give me? a little bit of a bigger break here (laughs) you know what I mean like and it's like you know it's just sort of like it's like it's just sort of a thought that entered my mind was like wow I've really given my whole heart to this experience in my life and I'm so grateful for it and I'm so grateful for being true to myself but there's also the other side of like is this if this is how is this is the quality of the tours and everything like given my age and um, I'm a durable person and very adventurous, but what do I want? (laughs) You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's like, if this is my life for the next 20 years, it's not going to (laughs) work. You know what I mean? Like just going, even going back to what you were saying, like when we were first talking is that maybe America isn't the place, you know, maybe once you go to France and once you do the Europe tour, you get that reward. Like the universe is like, Jamie, it's here. You just got to take a flight and pop over to Europe <laughs> and you will have it all. And it's like, that's what it is. It's like, like keep doing what you're doing. You're just in the wrong location. You know, that's what it could be also. I appreciate that. I, I think that's a very like, I'll accept that. Um, Because you see North America, well, I mean, America, at least. I don't know if you went up to Canada or anything. uh, No, I haven't gone up to Canada. Actually, not since 2016 or whatever. But um, but yeah, you know, I like that. Thanks for planting that seed. (laughs) I mean, like, just don't give up. Because I think the biggest thing, which I've realized, is you got to like keep pushing even when it seems like you've done every avenue just like it's like pivoting you just got to keep pivoting to find it because like if this is what your gut is telling you i truly like at least for me like i believe in if the gut says this is it and it feels right then you should do it and you you should just try to find a way maybe like you know you didn't feel nashville so you're gonna go to france which could be great and you said you felt comfortable and it felt good there and the people and your boyfriend's there and it's like that yeah that feels good inside and it feels right then by all means you should do that and you shouldn't feel you should be stuck here in america and i feel like a lot of people just kind of are like they're like oh well you know we tried and it's like no you should keep going motherfucker you should keep on pushing until you get what you want 
if you work hard and you truly believe in it, it will happen. It just, just it takes time. You just got to be patient, which I can understand can be hard with ADD and stuff. It's like you just want it now and you're like, oh, my God. And yeah. <laughs> well, it's like any other career. Like, I was like, if I would have chosen to go to school and be a doctor at some point, I would have been able to expect a certain amount of return for my work, you know, and with the arts, you just, it's all, it's kind of all a gamble. And it's like, I did, I really did believe truly in my heart, like if I'm putting out excellent work, if I'm, if I'm doing everything I can in my power, and if I'm staying open to the universe, like blessing me or whatever, like some, things are gonna incrementally get better. Um, and it's not like it hasn't, but it's just sort of feels like, you know, you're surmounting this mountain that's never ending, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and I know that that's sort of part of what life is, but I guess at the end of the day, though, um, I feel good. I feel really good about everything, my work, what I've, what I've done. And I don't feel like I'm quitting. I just, I feel like, uh, I feel like I just accept whatever is next. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm in a really good place of just being proud of my work and being proud of where I am and how far I've come on my own steam and, um, and like, and also totally accept, I accept whatever is next. Like I go to France and, um, and I don't make another record for another year or two. Like yeah. if that's what I'm supposed to do, then that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's next, but I, I, uh, I do definitely, it's in my heart to like tour Europe and, yeah. um, we should see everything just hearing as you're like adventurous you have to see europe see asia you know see it all you know um new zealand like i feel like there's so many places where like you can learn and like get inspired i feel like also you were talking about how you did different records in different locations i feel like location matters when you get inspired you know in the old days I don't know why I had to say it in that kind of sentence, but like as some of my mentors <laughs> taught me and they told me in their experience in life when rock bands or, you know, just, let's keep it as rock bands, like they would travel, go to a place, be there for a few months to write, you know, their record like Led Zeppelin went to Scotland and they were in a fucking castle. That is just so rad to hear that oh, idea. Okay. Or like you see, if you ever saw the Queen movie, they were in a barn somewhere in the... I don't know where in London and just like getting out of somewhere different. I feel like it's so important because like what you see and you feel and the fresh air or the grass, you feel the soil or whatever. It's like, it can really create something in your brain where it's like, I want to write about this. Like maybe I want to write about a Highland cow that's just like in the pasture eating or grazing, you know? Yeah. Who and knows? It becomes a hit song. Like what the heck? So I <laughs> well, think you know, I definitely, I have to say like, when I go back to when I'm in France, like the thing that I feel there most is that I can just be. Mm. And so part of me, <laughs> part of me is like, does that mean I'm never going to make another record because I feel totally great to just be. Yeah. And that's an interesting thing to ponder. <laughs> Or maybe it's just you're going to take some time and just see where this journey takes you for a bit. And it doesn't mean you're not like you could still be like doing like songwriting on the side or whatever on your day or whatever it feels right. But you're just in the moment, just at, you know, at one, just being Jamie, just, you know, in France with bicycles and cigarettes and all the good stuff. And coffee. I know there's more stuff to it, but I'm just throwing what I've seen or her uh, <laughs> you no know, you're just with your boyfriend and just going on nice walks with the dog you know and just like appreciating life and i think it's okay to take a few years off and just like come back when you're ready you shouldn't be forced you know because people can tell yeah and I, I i think the thing that's definitely changed for me is my i don't have this like momentum of like i need to like make my stamp you know, on my first album, by first, I mean, everything's fine. There's a song called Make a Spark on it. And it was the first song I wrote. It was in 2015. And when I wrote that song, 
I was like, oh my God, I need to make a new record. Um, and there's a line in it where it's like, um, I'm, I'm lying in the dark or I am crying in the dark. I just want to make a spark. How can I be a work of art if I'm a coward with my heart? And that was in 2015. Jamie in 2023, I made a spark, you know, like I, I, I finally made a spark. I really did. Like, yeah. A lot of people know my music now and I've played for a lot of people and I've made a spark, you know? So if that, so up to now that I've like basically said yes to myself and I did the thing that my heart needed to do, now what? That's kind of where I'm at right now. It's like, I have no idea. It might just, uh, maybe I just turn into consciousness and float up into the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say, you know, if you got to that spark in your 20s or 30s, would you be in a different situation? Would you not want to go or would it be the same feeling? I, also, I don't know. I, I've often thought about that, you know, because I actually got my first manager when I was living in New York City. I was 19 years old. I was playing, uh, I was playing my songs in the subway for like grocery money and like I was a worship leader at a church in the East village and this guy went to my church and he used to be like a, he was like a modeling, he worked, he was like a modeling manager or something. And he started managing me. And I have like, it's interesting to see like how our lives, like we have different, I feel like I'm, I could see like what that path would have been. Like if I had like not been so afraid to just like trust that the world had this adventure this musical adventure that I could have started when I was 19. And I, you know, instead I like hid my head in the sand and did what I thought I was supposed to do, which was get married really young to a Christian guy. And, you know, like, uh, I often think about that. Like, I wonder what, um, that life would have been like, because I would have gotten to experience being young and doing music as a kid and like, probably would have been in some bands and toured a bunch when I was younger and made some terrible music. And, you know, I don't know what would have happened. It's like, there's like a, there's like a movie I'm blanking on the name. It's like where she like sees different like universes of her life, whatever. And just, I'm blanking on the name of it. When a, I think I've heard of that. And I don't, I don't think I've seen it though. It's, but a it's, good movie. it's a little weird. They have like a reality where they have sausage fingers and everything. Don't know where. Ew. It's it's a yeah it's quite interesting, um, but like the the majority of the story of like just like she sees the different life like ha she has a daughter and they have beef but like seeing the daughter and how she turns out and stuff it's like whoa and you know hearing if you didn't you know get married and everything you did the music you know it's it's always that what if like why why are we in this path? why am I on this path and I feel like there is a reason why you know it might not make sense or it's hard but maybe at, hopefully, you know, at the end of it all, like it made sense or like, I'm glad it went this way or something. Well, you know, I know why. And it's because even back then I didn't feel like I was ready. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I knew who I was yet. And I really wanted to know who I was um, before I was exposed to the public, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, it's weird too, because like at the time I lived in New York, I was 19 and people like Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears were really popular back then. I just thought to myself, nobody wants to listen to some girl play folk music right now. It's like, um, it's, it's like not cool, <laughs> but I don't know. It'd be, it'd be interesting. Cause it's like, I thought, I thought with more like, oh, maybe, maybe if I would have started younger, I would have had like this crazy career by now or maybe i would have not been ready for it and i would have given up yeah well do you ever feel like you were like in the wrong century like you should have been born in the 60s and then you lived yeah you're in the 70s yeah because you seem like an old soul you know that's the definitely yeah. yeah yeah definitely my whole life i've felt that way i'm sure yeah definitely well i'm just well you're in the right era like now like you know 
with all the folk music and everything and all these artists like bb bridgers uh, maggie rogers like just hearing some of the music which i love and it's just like it fits well i think i think that was just like an era where electronic music people were like oh my god digital this is crazy man and now it's like today it's like yeah we have digital and pro tools but everyone still loves the tape the reel to reels they love the analog tubes and everything because there's something about that sound that at least to me where it's like you can't beat it it's just with all the plugins and stuff yeah no i agree it's i'd love to record the tape one day that would that would be really cool yeah definitely come to high street studios man we're always here you know what i mean like oh is that yeah that's that's like where like i do my work and everything so nice you know, crosby steel nash young recorded a deja vu there you know no way um janice joplin grateful dead dead kennedys uh oh, cool uh, so is that your, are you an engineer or something then? Yeah, or? like an apprentice right there for right now, you know, learning from an engineer, cool. which is super great. And um, yeah, every day, like the bass player for the Dead Kennedys, he has a band called East Bay Ray. He comes in all the time, hangs out in the back area, just smoking weed and just like have his cappuccino and they're always chilling and everything. And I'm like, this is, and they have so many lava lamps and just like, there's so much history <laughs> there and like, the furniture is still the same like they still have the same walls you can like see it it's like the history it's it's crazy and um yeah there's something you appreciate about it for sure that's so cool yeah i mean i have a tour this spring and i'm sure i'll be coming through san francisco so i'll have to keep in touch with you yeah, probably won't be there longer than the day of the show but yeah, you know it'll come through get it to see it all like even record it's it's uh i think the crazy part about high street studios is that they have a lot of pictures of like film photos black and white and color on their walls and studio a is the main one is what it's known for and there's this one picture where you see jerry garcia um david crosby and i'm blanking on the on the bass player and like they're in studio a and they're playing and you see crosby with a like a, a joint in his mouth and they're just jamming and then you go into studio a and you see the exact area like where they were standing where everything was like they haven't changed i mean maybe they got some new carpet and stuff but overall it's the same aesthetics from what it was back then and like the neve uh mixing board um which is cool. it's just and that's the, awesome yeah computer tape machine and they have a fair child and the original poltex and like it's like, a, it's like a candy shop for any audio engineer who goes in and just wants to you know have fun and record that's awesome yeah, but you're in Nashville too, so I'm assuming you have friends who own amazing studios, probably with like the gear and just reel the reels and all the analog stuff that you probably could go in. Yeah, it's funny though because I've been here over over like Christmas and New Year's, so everyone's gone. <laughs> yeah, okay, that can make it a little hard. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it's like I could be anywhere right now. You know, I could just be in like a cabin in the woods. It's kind of the same experience as far as. That's a good place to make music, you know what I mean? And get out <laughs> yeah. there. There's something I wanted to ask about your cover art. I really I love it. And then also your your um your short clips on like Spotify reels. You know, like I see you're using actual like a I think they're called super eights or something, like the actual like film cameras. Um oh, it might just be an effect that was on it, but Oh, so it's not a real okay, okay. I thought it was like a real no. camera on your uh I'm blanking on which song it was, but well, so all of those clips are actually from my music videos for different songs. Okay. So cool. on my YouTube page, um, that was one that was one special thing that I really I'm so proud of. Um that I got to like be a part of making I, I did like four music videos for this album. Sweet. Um and started making music videos with a friend of mine during the pandemic so we made one we made two for wonder we made the first one actually i just posted on my um youtube page he made it with he filmed a one one take on his iphone of me walking down the beach and like singing the song yeah. um but enough the second one we did was like one take of me doing a spontaneous dance to olol and at the end of it there's like this surprise, you can have to just watch it, but sure. Um, but yeah, for this last record, um, 
the first video I made actually was this totally serendipitous experience. I flew to Lisbon in Portugal and um, <laughs> I went there on a total whim. It was four days after I finished recording my record. Um, I had been talking to this guy that was my first boyfriend when I was like a lot younger. We had like touched base again, had been talking a bunch over that year and he was going to Lisbon. And then I, I just had this fire in my gut. I was like, I'm going to come visit you in Lisbon. Cause he lived in Hong Kong. And I was like, Oh my God, it's like, maybe it's destiny. Yeah. So <laughs> I fly to Lisbon. Yeah. The first day I'm there, I meet my boyfriend, my now boyfriend. And like, so it's so crazy. Cause like the whole reason I went there was so that I could have this meeting with Serge and um and then the four the like during the time I was in Lisbon I met an old friend who used to live in LA with his wife and he's a director and we went out to dinner at the end of dinner I was like man I really wish I could have made a music video here and then Brandon looks at me and he's like let's do it and I was like yes so the next day which was the last day I was in Lisbon we get together just him and I and he comes to the Airbnb where I'm staying, which is, by the way, like more of a B and B experience. So I had, I got, I like asked my hosts who were actually French, um, if I could like film my music video there, and they said, yeah. And the place is insane. It looks like a Wes Anderson film. Oh, so, so, so we did a music video for my song. It's called "It's a New Life." So we made this music video. I come back to LA. I made three more music videos. I did one for Easy Target. I did another one, which was also like a serendipitous event. Like my friend did a photo shoot for me one day. And then she's like, why don't we just try and do a music video? And she just had her camera and did three takes. And it's for my song Beginnings. And, and, then, and then the last music video I did with my friend um, for Is There Something Wrong With Me? And Moxie's in that one amazing i'll have to put the links into that that's awesome yeah i actually i can send you the link for my video collection if you want to check yeah. it out yeah definitely <laughs> to me it's a really beautiful thing that i've got to be a part of producing those myself because um my ex-husband was a music video director and so yeah. all through my 20s i was like helping him edit and come up with concepts and um, i used to do wardrobe for music videos so yeah. That explains why your outfits are so groovy and fabulous and everything. It's like, um, and, um, thanks. yeah, no, I, because like, that is like, that was another thing, aesthetic. Like, you know, you had this like Joni Mitchell, you know, uh, just vibe, whatever your outfits for and like how, like, it was just groovy. I was like, what thrift stock thrift stores were you going to? Cause I like, I love finding old vintage, like, you know, bell bottoms or you know just like corduroy jackets you know or anything like that there's something about it well i think for me and i think for me that the trick is because i don't really like shopping i think it's when there's the moment when you need something Got it. uh like if you're in a thrift store just try to feel like yeah. Even like put your fingers down, like over certain things, and and like let your eyes sort of glaze over. And sometimes something will poke out to you. Just pull it out and be like, "Oh, that's a thing." I like it's that. like by it's like shopping by energy. <laughs> yeah, we're here for it. We love this whole spiritual aspect of it, so I'll definitely um, we'll have to try that. And there's a, I think this, I don't know, second to last or final question. Either one is uh, for it's like. This idea, which I just love how you just, you know, you do it. You know, you just talked about how you went to Lisbon and you're like, I'm going to do it and everything. And I think going, being an adventurous is so important and I think it's so good. But how, as a musician and for other musicians who are listening to this or trying to figure it out, how do you make it work? How do you, because financially, you know, it can be tough here and there. And it's like, what have you experienced or learned that you could pass knowledge on to someone who wants to just, go see things and do their music in different locations, but have a hard time getting the money or trying to save up? Mm. Um, well, I definitely had a day job in the beginning, 
which I think, you know, can be important, is important. <laughs> um, but I, I figured out a way to only work two days a week. So the rest of that time I was recording and being creative and stuff. Um, I haven't had a day job in the last six years or so, seven years maybe, I don't know. And I think part of that was because at some point after many, many years of waiting, I actually had started having like some royalties coming in. Um, so that, that's been one income source, but it's not like a ton. It's not like I can like pay all my bills in one month. You know what I mean? Um, I know you do the classes. I saw your website where you give like songwriting teaching. I think that's what it was, right? Oh, you know, I've done a lot of that in, and it's like, it's like one of those things where it's like, I enjoy doing it when it happens. And so I put it on my website as something thinking that people might be interested, but I've only had like a handful of people that have, you know, reached out to do it, um, which is fine. It's like, it is what it is, but um, I don't know, honestly, I think I've just found a way to juggle like the live, like the live show income, it's definitely Airbnb being my apartment that has actually saved my ass because, um, yeah, someone else is paying my rent, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> someone else paying my rent. I mean, you know, like, I was on tour anyway, so someone else is paying my rent. And then I stay in a lot of places. People, you know, friends or family are like, yeah, you can stay. Like I had a friend in Colorado who was like, I had two weeks between tours. He just let me stay on the bottom half of his house. Like it's a whole other, I had my own private place for two weeks. He didn't charge me. Um, like, and he put on a show for me and paid me, you know, it's just like stuff like that where you just have to like, I think when you, believe in yourself and what you're doing and the magic of it you can't let your brain hold you back so much yeah because if you're supposed to do something then the universe is going to provide for you yeah. and so you know the universe has always provided for me and like usually what happens for me is like something kind of magical or weird will happen and i'll make a bunch of money you know what i mean it's like I was in this random Chevy commercial a few years ago and I made like a shit ton of money. And I was like, what? And then when the pandemic happened, I was able to get um, unemployment because of that job. Sweet. And, you know, like <laughs> there's other hacks where it's like, if you're an artist and you're not making a lot of money, sign up for the low income gas in electric, you know, like everyone offers low income programs, like, look up all the low income stuff instead of paying for health insurance get medi-cal yeah. if you're not making enough money to pay insurance sign up for free insurance you know what i mean like there's all kinds of like government programs that you can like hack. definitely you know and if you're an artist you're doing like you're doing the work of the soul like just because you're not being uh thanked for it in mon like monetary gain, like some people are, but most of us aren't. Like the universe will pay for you your life to work. You know, it's and that I I'm a living example of it because I'm just like, fuck this. I can't work in a corporate environment. I'm not that kind of person. I couldn't even do it if I tried. Like, um, I have to be like my own boss. Yeah. I have to be free. I can't have somebody with a thumb over me. It's like, it's hard enough for me when I was trying to work in a restaurant, you know, it's like, um, but yeah, there definitely have been times in my life though, where I, I was like, shit, why didn't I go back to college when I was married and my ex-husband would have happily paid for me to get more schooling, you know, to like get some degree and like, or become a realtor when I was sitting on my ass and when I was 25, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. don't take advantage of your youth when you have it. You know, it's like, if you have like an idea to do something else on the side that you're also interested in, like, don't say no to that because you have like a specific, specific idea 
and maybe this is me just talking to my younger self. Um, it's not to deter anyone from doing the art or the work that they should be doing. Um, but I, I just will say the reality of it though is like, you know, I'm in my forties now and it's like the physical body is a shit, you know, it just starts like certain things start happening, you know, like um, after this last tour, my elbow started hurting and now I have to wear like a fucking, I have to ice my elbow every day because I have tennis elbow. Yeah. I was going to say tennis elbow. Yeah. Shit. And I'm like, I got tennis elbow and then this shoulder's got some weird thing happening. And it's like, it's hard to keep up the body as you're getting older. So definitely take advantage of your youth while you have it. And um, yeah, I don't know. It, it can't hurt. I was reading this art, um, article in the New Yorker and I think it was like the guy was interviewing Todd Redgren. He was talking about how, you know, being in like being in the studio and stuff like that and how he's like still in his 70s he's still making records and he's never he's always had access to all the equipment so he's never like felt limited in a financial way because like he's making a bunch of money and it's like you know a producer or engineer or whatever and um and he, i was reading this sentence and he said like something like how he'd never never been limited in the way that um maybe other people who've kind of quit their artistic career because um because he always had like a day job or whatever you know and i and there's and it, and it just kind of hit me and i was like yeah it's true things do get a lot harder as you get you know as you do get older and if you don't hit a certain level in your career where you're just like everything's happening life is easy everyone knows my name oh, this person's calling me up and I'm going to be the voice of this character on this thing or whatever. It's like, and it's not to say I haven't had opportunities like that. It's just like, they're kind of random when they do happen. You know, even actually recently, I, I had a really cool gig um, co-writing a song and then performing the vocal performance for it for this TV show called Quantum Leap. And <laughs> the episode just came out a few days ago and um, I got to write the song with my composer friend, her name is Jamie Jackson, and we wrote the song and then I sang the vocal performance. And it's just like, man, I wish I could do at least one of those a month. That would be amazing. Cause it's, I mean, it, they, the income's great. Definitely. Um, but that's just the thing is like, I think once you try to hold too tightly to having something specific it's um you can't count on it happening necessarily i don't know there has to be some balance between having a target and never giving up and like being remaining open and, and accepting everything accept, accepting everything that happens and being grateful Definitely. um because like you know, there's a different version of me that could be sitting here and, and be like bitter because I didn't get the, you know, specific things that I was like, oh, by the time I'm this age, this is going to be happening in my career. <laughs> um, yeah. It's all a balance, I guess. It's, it's, yeah, I think it's basically it's a balance. And with this kind of like work industry, you just got to have different outlets, you know, like different plugs and stuff. So yeah, like, audio engineer but then like do sync likes to sing like for like beach or for commercials to use and then like you said like you know make stuff for other clients and then little ads jingles it's crazy how much money can rack up from an ad like you know you gotta have different outlets and then do gigs and then even corporation gigs you know like who knew how much they pay i didn't realize that um so it's like you just you gotta be accepting and like what i've realized in this year for 2023 is just like go with the process, trust the process and accept when something comes to you. Don't like, like, ah, I don't know. Just say, yes, I'm going to do it and just see what happens. Cause you don't know who you're going to meet from there. That's the most important part I've realized. That's true. That's definitely true. I like that. Yeah. You just got to be open, open-minded. And sometimes it can be hard, but it's like the more you're open-minded and the more you just kind of go and accept what life brings you, 
a lot of crazy shit, like you said, can happen. Like, and I mean in a good way. Like, just a lot of uh, amazing things where you're just like, how did I get here? One moment or last week you're here, and now you're working with these people here. It's like, yeah, wow, it makes it's crazy. It's surreal. Well, and life is like way more interesting when you're just open to all the possibilities. I think yeah. I feel like way more adventurous and and like and it's sort of like let it be and it's similar to like the shopping by energy it's like like being led by energy into certain situ situations i think yeah, right definitely i think yeah i think yeah that's i think we got it all i think you talked about spirituality your music um traveling i guess what would you want the people who listen to this to know or for upcoming things or just like what should they be aware of what's going on in jamie drake's life um, well, I have a spring tour that's going to be starting in, at the end of March, I'll be hitting, I'll be hitting the East coast and I'll be hitting a lot of the U S actually so. hey, <laughs> all over. I'll be doing it all over again. So, um, I'll be announcing that in a couple of weeks. So maybe by the time you put this out, like, um, I'll have announced my, um, uh, tour dates. Sweet, yeah. And so, um, if anyone wants to come out and see me play live, they, they, well, there's a high probability you'll be able to see me, um, March, April, May, I'll be touring. Um, and I also plan to put out some, some music this year, some little, some fun nuggets that, uh, might be an unexpected, unexpected. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Great. So, um, um... I just want to say thank you so much, Jamie, for coming on to the Grantastic Podcast. This is always fun. Um, got to know you, so, uh, get to know you more. Also, finally, great to have this, uh, to have you on finally for a fun fact for everyone. I don't know if it's a fun fact, but like we were trying to schedule it, so many things, but we're finally here, which was great. And learn yeah, a it doesn't it feel it feels nice to to do it and then like it's like at the top of the new year. Yes, right? well, I think that was the best part, just because there yeah. was so much with like, with like, the cameras, and then like, you know, random shit happening in my life with like, family issues and all this stuff. And it was just like, you yeah. know, it's perfect that this is my first podcast uh, for 2023, you know, which is awesome. Yeah. Because it starts the way and, you know, it's awesome just to have a spirituality, you know, concept into it all because definitely has like, you inspired me a lot today to like to do things and to like really just like work on and manifesting it. Like I have a, a whiteboard where I like, if I put it on the board, if I see it every day, it's like, it's in my head. So I'm gonna put some stuff to get me inspired and to flourish as we say. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Yeah. I'm so glad that you contacted me. It's, it's been such a nice conversation to have with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. The last podcast that I did uh, felt a little bit awkward for some reason, so I'm, yeah. I'm really glad to. No, well, this was, this, this just felt really this was like really, a cool conversation. Well, this was really great, and it was just really great. Um, just like it was just easy going, you know what I mean? Like I said, it was just like, and I think just having like like some similarities and understanding it's just like it helps a lot. And um, I don't know, it was just I felt like just talking to another close friend of mine, basically. Like these are the yeah. conversations I usually have with people. They come over, we smoke some weed, or maybe we microdose or whatever the fuck it is. And we just have Hopefully. a uh, <laughs> look at the lava lamp back there for hours, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, just like, and then make music or, you know, poetry or whatever, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, thank you again for coming on. And definitely I think people are going to appreciate it. And for all you out there, thank you for listening. Uh, stay hydrated, drink water, be safe, um, and listen to some groovy tunes. Yeah. Well, should I play New Girl to end yeah, things? Yeah, yeah. If if you if you I would we would love that. So if you, <laughs> are, you just want acapella or whatever, we're here for it. All right. Let's see. Heck yeah. My dog's looking at me like, uh, I need to go out of this room now, please.
Heard this song too many times. Is it is this the key that you're trying to get back? Oh yeah. <laughs> that was so loud. <laughs> you should definitely cut that out. <laughs> oh man. got like a vip song of it hearing that's amazing super great um oh, we're gonna love that um it sounded great um you did also did get a recording of that on your logic right mm -hmm. okay great great because i know zoom does like a uh cancellation whatever whatever there's like a compression so we'll definitely use that take for sure um Good. but uh yeah that was super amazing um again 
timeless, timeless. I could just see some of the like, I don't know, uh, Carol King singing like a cover of that song on her piano, whatever, with a cat near her, or like. Oh my god, that would be a dream. <laughs> or, or, or Simon, or or you know, or Joni, of course, you know, just like that's like a that's a timeless song, which I think is so great. Um, Thanks, Grant. Yeah, Jamie, actually, fun fact, I'll just throw it in. I actually. I played that song at High Street. Like I, you know, I went into the studio, or whatever, and I got there early, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna play some music while I'm setting up mics for the session beforehand. Played that when the and like you know, it was like at the middle part where like it had the solo part kind of, and like a few of the engineers popped their heads in, and they're like, they're like, who the fuck is this? And I was like, this is Jamie Drake, and they're like, where is she? I want. I was like, no, no, I'm just playing the music, and they're like, okay, if she comes through, you let me us know, and I was like. Aww. So yeah, definitely, you're always welcome at High Street. They are all um, definitely have their ra radars now of your music. Aww, that is so cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's sweet. Because it's timeless. They like, you know what I mean? If you hear a song where you just kind of like, you just feel the groove and it feels right. Like there's no questions. There's no whatever. They're just like, I dig it. If this is right, it's natural. It's supposed to happen. And that's how we do it so yeah yeah which is great well everyone on grantastic thank you for watching we appreciate you we love you and we hope you have a good day yeah thank you